What's going on guys? Welcome back. So, I uh, took this time to temporarily place the wide body on the car just to see how it looked. Um, as, you, as most of you know what the car looks like already, you know I already have side skirts mounted to the car that are permanent. So until I'm ready to start painting and getting these things installed, I'm not going to take my other skirts off. But you'll get the idea uh, when I turn the camera on and show you the progress. So first off, before I get into what this video is actually going to be about today, I want to go ahead and show you that because I think it looks freaking dope and I want to share it with somebody. So without further ado, there we go. So as you see, the front caps for the bumpers totally fit and look mint on the on this uh, Outcast Garage bumper. So that's going to be super. The front driver over fender fits really well. Uh, the spacing around the fender is almost flush all the way around the seam which is going to be really really nice when it comes to mounting this piece so the door caps are made really nice and they actually function say so the door opens cleanly without hitting any of the other pieces so that's awesome i'm absolutely in love with the wing i can't get over what how this thing's going to look and it beats buying a $1,300, $1,400 duckbill carbon trunk from any of the other manufacturers once it's done. Passenger rear, same thing. Everything fits and lines up nice. It's got really nice, smooth concaves and it hugs the, the body really nice. Conforms around the gas door lid the way it's supposed to. Again, same, same thing on this side. Door opens, nothing gets in the way. So that's great. Passenger side front. Again, the craftsmanship of this kit is really, really nice. It's damn near top notch. You can see it hugs and contours the body of the car really nice and clean. Exactly what you would expect. And then coming around back to the front to that beautiful Outcast Garage front bumper. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be amazing once it's done. But that's all we're gonna talk about the wide body today. We're gonna focus on one specific aspect of the wide body. The wing can go on like tomorrow. I just gotta prep it and get it ready. So that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna take the weekend and I'm gonna prep this, this wing and get it installed on the car. For those that don't know the car already, I do have a wing underneath. It's gonna to have to be removed. Just a little tiny spoiler, no big deal. And this rear emblem is gonna to have to come off. And that's it. These two pieces come out. The new duckbill gets sanded down smooth and painted. For those of you that have seen my previous videos, you know that I can paint on my own. I don't need to take it anywhere. So this is going down this weekend. And my goal is by Monday, since I have a four day weekend this week, this thing's gonna be done and on the car, ready to go to work. As you can see, a little bit of heat, some goo gone, and a lot of elbow grease. Uh, all of the glue residue is off where the old wing used to be. And for the first time taking off the emblem, it came out clean too. So if I had not purchased a duckbill spoiler to cover that area, I could have rocked this uh, emblemless and it would have been just fine. There is an easy way to get these this glue and stuff off the car. And that's using a rubber eraser. Um, a lot of auto body collision repair companies use them. I'll post a link to one in the description from Amazon. So if you wanna, if you need to do work like this, you can buy one to use. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and prop the uh, duckbill up there 
and take a look at it and see how it looks now that everything's out of the way. Overall, the fitment is just as good as I expected it to be. It conforms to the tops of the taillights and the center carbon trim like it's supposed to. It also sits nice and even around the top and the sides. Now, as you notice, there's about an eighth of an inch gap on each side. That's to be expected. That's usually how it always is with any spoiler that you buy for these cars. So as long as you line it up and even it in the center before you install it, uh, it'll turn out fine. Uh, my hope is that by tomorrow evening, it'll be sitting on the table behind me with clear coat applied and curing so it can be installed Sunday afternoon. So uh, this concludes tonight and I will pit back up in the morning. All right, new day. No sense in talking. Let's just uh, jump back into it. I hit it with a Scotch-Brite pad first just to knock down the shine. I find that with ABS plastics and stuff like that, if you knock down the shine, it's a little easier to see any of the imperfections that are in the material. While sanding that, however, I did notice a small little hole, and I can't tell if you can see it on camera or not. You probably can't, but it's right there. So I'm gonna get some glaze putty and fill that little nick in, let it dry, sand it smooth, clean this, get it lint-free, prep my paints area, and then we'll hit this with primer. All right, with two coats of primer down and it's dry, we'll go ahead and uh, wet sand this again with 400. Get this primer nice and smooth. Let it dry, wipe it back down. Make sure there's no imperfections. And then we'll be good to hit it with some base coat. All right guys, so the base coat's down and everything laid pretty smooth, no runs, no imperfections that I can find yet, and no debris that I found yet. So once this has cured off the whole way, I'll uh, give it a slight wipe down with a uh, non-stick cloth. So that way when I lay the clear, I don't have any imperfections in the clear either. So I'll go ahead and uh, get the can shooken up and get ready to lay it down. say this came out perfect with no issues whatsoever that's not the case uh, when you paint something in your garage that's not in a paint booth with aerosol paints that you know are meant for the job but not as good as actual uh, you know spray gun clear uh, you tend to have, you will have issues I got $45 into the paint job with this thing it would have cost me 200 plus to do this professionally uh, is the car a show car? No, it's not. Is it a SEMA build? No, it's not. It's a daily driven car. So having a couple little blemishes is not a huge deal to me. So I'm gonna get it mounted on the car and we'll see how she looks.
well everybody there we go there is the first ever painted and installed carbon pixels duckbill spoiler extension now if you like the look of the twelve hundred dollar carbon uh, carbon fiber duckbill uh, trunk but you can't afford it this is a pretty cost effect effective option i believe they're 199 on the website i'm not sure of the shipping cost but just know it's going to be significantly less than 1200 bucks even getting this painted professionally, you're looking at maybe $150. So for under $400, bucks, you have a duckbill style spoiler for the Q50. Uh, as you saw in the video, the back side comes pretty flush and smooth around the whole back. It comes all the way down to the uh, top of the taillights and the top of the trunk um, decorative element there. The only seams you really have on it are the sides and are across the top of the uh, trunk like you would with any other spoiler. If you can get over the fact that there's a seam like I can, again, it's a really good value. I highly recommend it, and I encourage those that enjoy the, uh, enjoy the video and like the overall spoiler to uh, get one, because they are very cost-effective and very well-built. Uh, that's all I have for this one, so if you like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification, and go ahead and give this video a like, and I will see you guys on the next one.